Today is a big day for my latest project and I can't wait to see what it's going to look like. Welcome back to the channel once again. Let's do this. These are 500 Golf Flex. Yeah. So I've got it all nice and smooth. <clears throat> and loaded into the gun, Rob started spreading it over the seams. You can teach an old dog new tricks. I prefer to use three to one, but this is my way that I do and it's been working for years. Rob started laying a light but even coat. Time has come for, for you to do your own side. Bloody health and safety. Beige and shiny was the brief. And that's what you And got. you've exceeded that. <laughs> it's very beige and very shiny. Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Marcus Hayes and today is a big day for my latest project, Heidi, the Hearing Aid Beige Model Mark II Escort. Following on from the previous video, when we put some primer on her engine bay and her door shuts. Today, we're gonna to be painting those areas beige and I can't wait to see what it's gonna look like. And I'm gonna be getting involved again myself today on the spray gun and um, yeah, helping my good friend Rob with this job. So this will be the first time that I've actually put top coat on properly with a spray gun and a compressor. So fingers crossed, I do a good job and I don't get too many runs, but um, yeah, I'm sure with my good friend Rob's guidance, I'll be absolutely fine. Now, one thing or two things that we didn't use when we were primering, but we really do want to use on the top coat is a measuring cup to mix up the paint, you know, accurately. Although Rob has got so much experience, he can do it <laughs> pretty accurate by eye. And we want to use some paint strainers as well. So I'm going to stop off and get those bits on the way and then make my way to Rob's workshop. All right, we are back down at Rob's workshop. Welcome back to the channel once again. Let's do this. <laughs> All right, Rob's very eager to crack on with this. So yeah, last time we was down here, you would have seen us put the two-pack primer on the door shuts and the engine bay. And since then, Rob's been working hard prepping it all. So what have you had to do since we were last down here? Okay, so once the primer had gone off, uh, I've got some uh, 500, these are 500 Golf Flex. Yeah, exactly what I used on the inside of Heidi's doors. And um, basically I've rubbed it down with this. So I've got it all nice and smooth, all throughout, everywhere. Every single area has been done with that. So it's all nice and smooth, ready for the top coat. But before we do the top coat, we've got to do some sealer. Yeah. And in the clips you would have just seen, Rob was applying some etch primer to some of the areas where you broke through when you were prepping, basically. That's right, yeah. And in so fact, some areas you found weren't perfect enough for you and you no. threw a bit of filler in. I bits, did, yeah. yeah. So, uh, especially along here, down here, wasn't right. Um, up here. Yeah. And same, there's some bits on the other side. Um, some bits on the uh, front skull. That took a bit more of attention. Yeah, that, that needed quite a lot as well, didn't it? Yeah, that needed a lot. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of work, but... So, um, yeah, plenty of plenty of prep has happened since the last time we were here. Yeah. And, um, yeah, as you just mentioned, the next stage is to put some seam sealer in some of the seams, right? Yeah, that's right. All right, so we've actually got some Kent sealer. Uh, that we're going to be using today. I'll leave a link to their website in the description. Also, I've got to send a shout out to my friend Colin, who actually works for them. And yeah, basically, we're going to try and do this, you know, factory, but maybe a bit neater than factory, because they were a bit slapdash with these. Well, we will try. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a couple of areas like this, for instance, where it's had a plate uh, in, you know, its previous life. Um, and this is a spot where the seam sealer goes. So we're just going to try and make it a little bit wider there, just to cover up there. 
But um, yeah, originally they have sea light all along here, round the heater bubble, round here as well. Um, and you were saying you want to chuck a bit in like areas like this as well, yeah? Yeah, so I wanted to put a bit down here just to give it a bit more protection yeah. and same bit on the back down there. Yeah. And in there. Yeah. With the sealer opened and loaded into the gun, Rob started spreading it over the seams. Is that thinner, yeah? And that wall based debriser. All right. He tried to find the balance between making it look similar to how these cars were when they came out of the factory, but also making it look nice and tidy. Underneath the rain gutters, Rob applied the sealer, but then wiped it all away so that it was only left inside the seam itself. I had a go at sealing the rear passenger side rain gutter. You can teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> and seeing as I didn't completely ruin it, I'd done both of those areas on the driver's side myself as well. All right, so that's the ceiling done, and now it's time for us to get ready to actually put the Cordoba beige paint on, and I am so excited for that. But before we get into that, I've got to send a massive thanks and a shout out to my friends at Bodycraft in Watford. I went to see them on the way here, and um, yeah, they've been really helping me out with materials for this job. And today, they've hooked us up with loads of measuring cups, also some uh, paint stirrers and a big stack of paint strainers. Now the great news is that I have now managed to get you guys a discount code at Bodycraft in Watford. You can order stuff off their website for delivery or you can pop in and see them at their shop in Watford. And if you use the discount code MH10, you're gonna save 10% off of everything. I'll leave a link to their website in the description. So go and check out their site and uh, save yourself some dough. You're gonna be using a different gun today, yeah? Than yeah, so one, today right, I'm gonna right. be using my SATA mini jet and this is a 1.3 fluid tip. Same again, we're gonna go at two bar pressure. Yeah. It's all adjusted. I've got a full fan. On a Davilvis, that top one at the very top is your fan, but these ones on SATAs, it's here. Right. That's my fan, so that's fully open, so that's wide. So we're gonna use that one today. So when it comes up to the engine bay, it's easier to get in tight spaces rather than a big gun in, in the way. So I wanna get a nice finish on this, so I've decided to use this one. Some people still use the big guns, but I prefer to use this one. It gets down everywhere where you need to get. So that's what I'm looking for today. So I suppose the only downside is you have to fill it up more often. Yeah, you have to fill it up more often, but you know, by doing it, you'll be surprised how far one cup will get you. So there'll be enough, probably one cup to get me a one good coat throughout that whole engine bay. So that should be more than enough. So you know then that you're gonna need one more cup to do the door shut on one side. You can change the cups, they do bigger cups. Um, and they also do throwaway cups that you can put on this, which are called PPS pots. And uh, they literally, once you've used them, take them off, throw them in the bin, that's it. And you cool. just clean out the actual body of the gun. And I know um, last time you was doing the mixing by eye, because you've yeah. just got so many years experience. But yeah, uh, yeah today we're going to be using the mixing cups, obviously, supplied yeah. by Bodycraft. Yeah. And so in terms of the paint, obviously this is two-pack paint, same yeah. way we use two-pack primer. Yeah. But uh, the mix is a bit different, you were saying to me. Yeah, there's two ways you can mix this. Yeah. Um, you can have it quite thick or you can have it quite thin. On here, if you see, you've got two to one. Yeah. Or three to one. Yeah. And obviously when we've done our primer, that was four to one. Right. So I prefer to use three to one, just, just because when I use three to one, you've got a bit more of a build of an actual product on there than two to one. Two to one is going to be quite, quite thin. Even though you're building up your layers, but I still prefer to use three to one it's just because you haven't got to put lacquer or nothing on top of this. Mm. This is gum finish. Mm. So I like to build it up with three to one and I've got enough on there. So if I say, if say like a bug landed in it or you got a horrible bit of dirt in there, you should have enough product on there to give it a quick 800, 1500, give it a polish and it should be fine. Mm. 
So I like to go three to one. Yeah, and it's like you were saying to me uh, before, like, you know, every painter's got their own methods and stuff, haven't they? Yeah, so. every single painter, we're all different. Even though we, we, put on, we get the same product at the end, but the way people do things is completely different. Some people are the same, some people ain't. Um, it's, it's all different ways that people do it, but this is my way that I do, and it's been working for years. I'll carry on doing That's what it. I'm doing. Yeah, it definitely needs a mix. And we've got the stirrers from Bodycraft, of course. I just use an old screwdriver normally. <laughs> Once Rob had given the paint a stir, looks more like Cordova Vage now, he mixed it up at a three to one ratio with hardener and then added 10% thinners. And after another thorough stir, Rob loaded up the gun so it was ready for action. So, good ready to go. To go. Rob started laying a light but even coat onto the driver's side door shuts. And it was so awesome seeing these bits turn beige. Next, Rob started waving his spray gun at the engine bay. And he actually jumped inside the bay so that he could get to all the areas properly. Rob had to strategically paint the sections of the engine bay in the correct order and keep positioning himself in such a way that he didn't lean on any of the areas that were already painted. But before long, the whole engine bay was looking very beige and then it was my turn to pick up the spray gun. Time has come for, for you to do your own side. <laughs> right. Get your own finish. Cool. Right, what do I need to do? <laughs> what do I need to remember? Make sure you keep at least like, a fist away from the panel. Doesn't matter how, how you hold the gun, you can hold it like that, like that. You can have it like this. As long as you don't tip it too, too much over to the side, because don't forget, the paint will come out at the top. Right. So it's about finding your comfort when you're painting. So make sure you've got the airline like this. So your left hand with the airline right hand with a gun or if you're left-handed the other way around but make sure you're comfortable with the gun keep a nice distance and don't go too fast don't go too slow like I, like you was with the primer so you kept it a happy medium all the way around remember you're not covering first way mm. you know when you're used to a gun then yeah you know when to push before you start getting runs so for your first time, literally go over it as quick as, you know, if you go over it like you did with your first coat of primer where it was still a bit see-through, that's fine. And you can always go back mm. and add a bit more until you're happy. So remember, your first coat doesn't have to be too heavy. Have a go and see how you feel with it. All right, cool. So obviously on your shot that you did, you yep. covered it quite well, obviously, because you're yep. more experienced. So. I shouldn't be trying to get that. You don't have to go for I that. I should just be trying to get a dust coat that's even. Yeah, if you can get a nice coverage, don't forget this is beige, so even with a light, a quick pass over it, it's going to look quite a lot. Yeah. So you don't need to go too mad with it for your first attempt. Get used to the gun, get used to how your trigger feels, and see how you get on with your first coat. Yeah. And then you know for your next coat that you can push yourself a little bit more, get a little bit more wet, before you start getting runs. Yeah. So I'll focus more on trying to get it even, even. trying to get some paint on all of it. Yeah. Um, and not necessarily, and yeah, like a dust coat sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, I'll just adjust as I go. Right. And see how you get on. Cool. How hard can it be? <laughs> Bloody health and safety. There you go. Do you think I should pass that again just to get yeah, that a little so, bit more? So you've done that corner here. So now you want to put the gun more like that way, so you're getting in there. Right. Yeah, don't forget this fan is like that. So maybe diagonal. So, yeah, go a bit of a diagonal. Yeah. And then don't forget, you can always go back up, and then you've covered that underneath this check strap. Right, there and you go. There you go. And that's more coverage now, see? Yeah. That's good enough for your first coat. So if you can do that throughout the rest of it, that's what we're looking for. Following Rob's guidance, I continued to put a light first coat on the passenger side door shuts. 
it felt awesome to be doing some more proper painting. And I think I've done quite well, even if I do say so myself. Rob laid a second heavier coat on the driver's side door shuts and the engine bay. And then I laid a successful second coat on the passenger side door shuts. I decided to leave the entire third coat to Rob, including the passenger side. And just look at how the job turned out. It was awesome to see the engine bay and the door shuts finally in paint and I was well chuffed with the results. Beige and shiny was the brief. And that's what you And got. you've exceeded that. <laughs> it's very beige and very shiny. No, well done, mate. You've done well as well on this side. Yeah. Very happy. Rob was trying to insist that I put the final coat on that side, but um, yeah, I just let him do it. I I'm confident that I could have done it, but I just know that he can push it as far as it will go, make sure there's loads of paint on there without any runs. And yeah, there's literally no runs anywhere that we've been able to find. No. <laughs> yeah, so. That's a good thing. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm actually quite surprised how well I reckon I can do, like with, with a spray gun, if you know what I mean. Like you can push it further than I thought you'd be able to. Yeah, with that mix ratio, it's easier to, to you can find a flow, you can see it in front of your eyes. Mm. So you know how far to push your paint. When it's in an aerosol can, it's you can't judge it. Mm. Even though you've got constant pressure there, it's not not the same. It's no nowhere near the same. But you, did you feel better with the spray gun than the aerosol can? Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely, definitely. I mean, with a spray can, it's you know the pressure and all that is just set, isn't it? Yeah. Like whereas with a spray gun, you've set it up like so. And you can do half a trigger. Yeah. When you're painting, you can come on and off. With an aerosol can, it's full on. Yeah. You know, you don't have, with a spray gun, you can ease off a little part, so you don't have to put so much product on. Yeah. So you, you can, you've got more control with a spray gun than yeah. a can. Yeah, definitely, definitely, man. But yeah, man, thanks for um, no, like, thank you know, you. talking us through in it and let, let me have a go, man. It was oh, really you. interesting. And obviously, thanks for all the effort you've put into this. You know, the job did turn into a bigger job, like with you having to bare metal the door shuts like that's that's a lot of hassle and i, I just really appreciate all your efforts no man. no problem man it's not quite finished yet you do want to go around and just like once it's dry and just check that there's any bits that need like yeah so back and polishing or i'm not in a spray booth as you can probably see yeah so i am going to get a bit of dust that'll go on the tops so i just want to go around with a bit of 1500 2000 and then just polish up the bits that i'm not happy with where the dust is settled but it'll just be little bits that are I want to tickle yeah. and make sure they're nice. Yeah, it looks awesome, man. Can't wait to uh, start bolting some shiny bits to this thing. I'm going to leave Rob's contact details in the description. If you need any paintwork done, get in touch with him. He is busy, so um, if you're planning any paintwork <laughs> this winter, <laughs> get in touch with him now. As I've said before, it's not just you know your generic paintwork like this that Rob can do. He's into airbrushing. Uh, he does crazy things with like motorbike helmets. Um, you're going to be getting into... Uh, hydro dipping as well soon so yeah he's um he's got a lot of strings to his bow and um as i say his contact details are in the description definitely get in touch with him if you need any work done and um don't forget to mention my name i'm Thank gonna you. get out your way and leave this thing in your capable hands for just a couple more days yeah i'm sure you're sick of the sight of it now aren't you no i'm not <laughs> All right, so that is the end of this video. Do let us know in the comments what you reckon on Heidi's new paintwork. Don't forget to check the links in the description to Bodycraft in Watford, also Kent Europe, and of course, Rob's contact details. If you thought this video was any good, please do give it a thumbs up and a share. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Click subscribe if you're new. Feel free to follow me on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. Massive, massive thanks to my patrons for your ongoing support. I'll leave all the links to everything in the description along my email address for anyone who wants to contact me but other than that until next time from me and my good friend rob thanks for watching <laughs> <laughs>